Are you a small business owner that's successful, but if you stop working, you have no money, it could all fall apart? Maybe you actually have income and you're doing well, but you just don't know what to do with your money. Today, I wanna to help you with that. My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design, and today's video is three easy steps to start financial freedom in real estate. All right, let's dive in. Because a lot of people, you either work a good job, you get a lot of money, or maybe you have a small business where you're successful, but if you pull out of the business, your business is no longer a business, right? It's really a glorified job. Nothing wrong with that. Working for yourself is absolutely awesome. Having a job is awesome. It's what you do with the money you get that's important. So the first step is, if you wanna create financial freedom, you wanna start that path, regardless of how much money you make, you have to start with putting a percentage of your income away, saving it to invest. I don't like the word save, but really, you're taking that money and allowing it to build up so that you can take it and go invest it into something like real estate to create cash flow, to start helping you create passive income. So I recommend a percentage. Now, why do I say a percentage versus a certain amount? Because look, if you're a business owner or you're someone that's on commissions like salespeople, I coach a lot of salespeople, I coach a lot of small business owners. What happens is you might have a really good month and you might say, yeah, three, four grand is awesome. I can do that. But what happens if you have a slow month? and you only make three grand that month for whatever reason or less. You can't make that commitment. So I say pick a percentage. I always start small and then I'd start building up. So I started at 2%. I was like, I'm gonna put 2% of my income away. Then it went to three, then it went to five. Eventually I went up to 10 and beyond. And so I recommend a small percentage to start with and then allow that to grow over time. Now, while you're doing that simultaneously, you wanna work on increasing your income. Allow yourself to get better at what you do, whether it's sales, whether it's marketing, whether it's coaching, whatever you do, master your skill at a higher level. And this is where coaching really becomes powerful. A lot of times people might build a skill set, but they won't, their mindset is, I'm not worth that. Even though I can deliver, I don't feel like I can charge more. And that's why coaching is really powerful. And if you need help, reach out to us. However, you want to master your skill at a higher level and start charging more as long as you're providing more value. If you're not providing more value, then don't charge more. That's not fair, right? We want to make sure that you're going out into the marketplace and providing value. So you have to do that. You want to increase your income because if say you're making 10 grand a month and you can get to 15 grand a month, that's an extra well, five grand or depending on what your percentage is, could be more or less, but you can be able to put more away towards investing, okay? So you wanna pick a percentage and you also want to work on increasing your income. That's the first step. All right, so here's the deal. You just created this nest egg of money that's sitting in there. And I would advise as you're building up that amount of money, your, that percentage you're putting away each month, put it in the money market. Again, I'm not your financial advisor, so don't hold me to this. Uh, but what I would do is I would put it in a money market account. You get better returns than a savings account. I think the average savings account is like 0.37%. It's just horrible. You used to have 10% back in the day, but anyway. So here's the deal. Once you have this nest egg of money, what do you do with it? Well, step two is you have to invest it. And what I would say the simplest way is to invest it in a home, a single family home, okay? Now, are there better ways? Could you go bigger? Absolutely. I'm just saying to start to get your feet wet, just to understand investing, because most of you will more than likely own a home or be responsible for a home that you live in. So it's already something you're familiar with right and so we don't want to go off this side and you know go say hey go get a self storage unit or a commercial building while you can do that I'm not limiting you but I'm saying to keep it simple you want to invest in something easy right away and so with a single family home it's easier to qualify for however you want to you want to make sure your taxes are in line your account can help you your lender you want to talk to different lenders see what their terms are and get pre-qualified for this but once you invest in a home, you have three easy strategies. The most common is you put a long-term rental in there, a renter in there, right? You put long-term renter 
It's easy, they're paying you every single month. You wanna make sure that you qualify them, that they have the income. Um, I always use like to look at whatever um, amount that you're running it for, say it's $2,000. I like to make sure they have $6,000 or more of income coming in. You could actually have a property manager do that for you and filter everyone and get the best tenants in there, but you're paying a percentage of your profit. So anyway, long-term, pretty simple, right? You get someone in there, long-term paying, each month usually a year-long contract if not two um, depending on what you want next is a midterm rental right midterm rentals I had someone on here her name was Sarah Weaver you guys can go back and check out the video she did she produces over $14,000 a month passively with midterm renter renters or rentals <laughs> and so what do you look for you want to look for somewhere that I would say is by an airport definitely by a hospital is a big big one right has a large population to it but by a hospital because there's traveling nurses and doctors that come for anywhere from three to six months to a year and this way you might be able to get someone for you know seven months and you can charge more than you could a long-term renter but it's rented for longer okay they are very successful they are profitable there is some work in finding that and being a connection with companies or organizations that do that so you can help them but if it's by a hospital or a college could be a really good thing but I would advise around the hospital, okay? And then the next one would be short-term rentals. Now, short-term rentals have blown up a lot in these last few years, so you gotta be careful. You gotta do your due diligence. You gotta see, you know, is there any restrictions on the house that you buy? Um, is the county or the city, are they looking to ban short-term rentals? Is there a lot of short-term rentals around you? You gotta have different tools and do your analysis of how much money could you have coming in. There's a great tool called AirDNA, and it can, if you buy that zip code, you can identify, you know, what's the average income? What's the um, the most amount of money you could get? Maybe the median. And so what I like to do is you have to remember this. If you say your uh, AirDNA says your area, you could get $100,000 a year as a short-term rental. You gotta use roughly, I use 16% of that total number. That goes to cleaning fees because that number includes your cleaning fee. So 16%, so really it would be $84,000 and then you can say, okay, based on this cash flow, 84,000 a year coming in, minus my debt service, my expenses, CapEx, um, your repairs, anything like that, can this cash flow? If it's a yes and you have a certain number, like $500 or more, I don't really like to invest in anything that doesn't produce $500 or more in cash flow when it comes to a single family home. I would like it 500 or more. You get to choose what's best for you, but you want to start investing in something easy. Now, you can have a property manager do your short-term rentals, but it is gonna take anywhere from eight to 12%, usually 10% is key uh, for property managers, but you're gonna take that and give that to them. Now, you won't have to worry about anything, but you're also not taking that money in. So if you're making 100 grand a year, 10% of that, 10 grand, because you have someone else outsourcing it. What I recommend is getting a VA overseas. You can pay them like five, six bucks an hour. And whenever a guest you know, writes, they can go ahead and respond for you. You can be able to put commonly asked questions together. If something breaks, they can find a plumber or someone and they can call and make sure it's good to go. So there's an advantage to doing this. There's some tricks or tools or strategies. I personally, with my business partner, we manage our own together. So what are some of the cons to owning a short-term rental, mid-term rental, long-term rental? So the first one is I got here is all the risk is on you. You have to take all the risk. If someone doesn't show up or rent your place out, you are responsible for the mortgage. If anything breaks, you have to pay for all the repairs. It can be very challenging to pay for all the repairs all yourself especially if they're big ones you're responsible for all the people that are booking that are messaging you if you're going to run it yourself and so a lot of times a project um, manager or a um, property manager can be a benefit here to take that off your plate like we were saying earlier now what are the pros first one is you can actually 
partner with someone just like I did. They're like family to us and we were gonna be up there with them all the time anyway in our short-term rental in the mountains. And so we partnered with them. So what's that do? It mitigates the risk for me and for him where we split any repairs and if for, no one rents for the month, because you know ours is in a seasonal location if we have to come out of pocket for whatever reason we can split the mortgage right anything that shows up that needs to be repaired we split it so we mitigate that so that's a pro um also cash flow you are going to cash flow the only reason why you're investing in a single family home to start is to cash flow to get your feet wet to get rolling so you can do all of it yourself which i kind of recommend in the beginning so you can find out do you enjoy it do you not enjoy it it's a headache and honestly our first tenant as our short-term rental was a nightmare for us and i was like oh my gosh i don't want to do this why did I do this? And now it got easier over time. So anyway, you get to decide, but I always, I would encourage you to get your feet wet and try it out, all right? So that's the second step. All right, the third step you can do is you can actually, if you're not excited about managing anything or going out, finding the property, doing your due diligence, you just kind of have this chunk of change and you just want to put it into something so you can get money back, cash flow. You just want to be a passive investor. You could be what's called a limited partner in deals like apartment syndications. So let's say you saved up $100,000, you can go ahead and invest that with general partners that have a property under contract that you get to invest your 100 grand. They usually give you a percentage anywhere from eight to 10% annual return. And then when they sell the building, hopefully they sell for much more than they bought it, you get an upside when they exit it too. Usually also you get depreciation benefits with that, but we'll talk about that here in a moment. But it's an easy way to just sit back, create mailbox money. I know many doctors, they make, you know, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, and every you know, every few months they put you know 50, 100 k in the syndications and they have it spread out through different apartment syndications, and they just sit back and every quarter they get mailbox money. It just comes in, you know, depending on what the deal is, how much they put in, it's, you know, one, two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month coming in passively. Now, most of these apartment syndications are usually anywhere from three to seven years. So you will gotta be willing to put your money in. You don't, so here's a con is with it doing this, is you don't have any control, you have no say in what to do with this property. The general partners, the ones who are running it and managing it, they do everything, which is actually a pro in this case, in certain cases too, for those of you that just wanna sit back and do nothing, collect mailbox money. It is doable, but the benefits are you get the cash flow, get that mailbox money. Now, what I will say is you do want to make sure that when you're investing in a deal that you do your due diligence. Who are these people? How do you know them? What's their track record? Have they bought before? Have they managed buildings before? Um, I just saw a on Instagram, there was two partners. They bought a portfolio. I think it was in the Houston area for like $239 million. They bought it not even two years ago and they declared bankruptcy, right? Like they had to forfeit the properties because they mismanaged it. They didn't do their calculations well. The market changed, right? Things that maybe they didn't project it for whatever reason all those people lost their investment. So there is a risk to it, you could lose it. That's why I say doing your own due diligence is extremely important. Everything that I, every deal that I invest in, I invested in self storage uh, uh, deal in, on the East Coast. I told myself, am I willing to lose this money? If it, if it goes south and I got nothing back, am I okay with that? And if the answer is yes. I put it because let's be honest it's like Wayne Gretzky says you miss 100% of the shots you don't take you're a small business owner making good money but you don't have passive income you are a job you are a glorified job maybe you have a job that makes you a lot of money but if you stop showing up they won't pay you anymore you don't have cash flow to help you start financial freedom the name of the game is cash flow you want to get your cash flow to start growing as you open, and if your expenses are here, you want your cash flow to outgrow your expenses. And as soon as you do that, 
you are now become you now have become financially free. So if it's hey your expenses cost three thousand and you have thirty five hundred dollars a month passively coming in, you are financially free. It doesn't mean you're rich. It doesn't mean you're like Bill Gates or you know Donald Trump or Elon Musk. But it means you don't have to go to work if you don't want to. But here's what I know, and I'm going to kind of go off script here a little bit, right? God's called you to put your hand to the plow, to go out there and do good work, right? And I and I was just telling people in my network, you know, for the last couple of years, I've been working on increasing our passive income and pulling back from coaching, where I only coach on Mondays and Tuesdays now, and I do my real estate and other things the rest of the week. And I was like, almost as if I was retiring, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's not right. Like God's called us to put our hand to the plow, to go out and multiply our efforts, our talents, our income, go out and multiply that, right? So you gotta be careful that you're not just gonna sit back and do nothing. Financial freedom, as I always say, is not the end goal, it's the starting point. You get to go out and make an even bigger impact in the areas or the people or the communities or whatever it is for you that you wanna do. So, all right, and plus, here's what's great about this third one. You know, you invest in apartment syndication. It could be a self storage deal, commercial deal, doesn't really matter. But you could also have your bragging rights. If you invested in an apartment deal that had 200 doors, you can go to out there and be like, yeah, I own 200 real estate doors. Now, to what extent do you own them? What percentage? Very few. Uh, you know, percentage depending on how much income you have and how big the building is, but you can at least say, I've invested in it. It's an inflated ego thing, but it's the goal is passive income. So these are three simple steps for you guys to be able to start the process of beginning financial freedom. Now, some of you might say, Joe, you know what? I, I put a percentage of my money away. I'm working on increasing my income. I do already have a nest egg. I don't know what to invest in. I could do a single family home, but I don't really know what I'm doing. If that's you, I'd love to help you. I would love to maybe even partner with you in how to do that. Or maybe you're like, hey, I wanna do an apartment syndication. I'd love to invest in self storage or something like that. I have people all around the country that have deals all the time with incredible returns. You would have to be doing your own due diligence, but I could help introduce you or depending on the deals that I have going on at the time, we might be able to partner on that. But if you're in one of those positions where you're like, Joe, I gotta increase my income. I gotta pick my percentage. I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. Reach out, you need coaching. Let me or my team really work with you and help you get to that next level. Because here's my goal, this is my goal. I wanna create a community of financially free people so we can set events up and do some of the coolest things around the world together. Because no sense of getting financially free, but none of your friends can do anything with you, right? It's like, I have very few people that at the call, of, you know, if I call them and say, hey, you know, we were gonna go to Hawaii or Mexico tomorrow or next week, would you be in? That they could drop everything they do and go in and say, let's go, right? Now, a lot of people can, they just work in their business, but do you have those people in your life? How cool would it be to be part of a community where we could all do cool, epic things and while we're building wealth around the world together? Right, and that's the goal here coming soon. So more details on that, but if you're interested, let me know. All right, I know this was a lot, so here's what I need you to do. I need you to comment below. If you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments below. Make sure if you're watching this for the first time that you subscribe to the channel, push, push that notification button so that every time a video comes out, you know when one comes out because we're all about consciously creating the life you want through passive income investments and mindset and transforming every area of your life because it's not just enough to get financially free and have wealth. You wanna be fit, you wanna be in great relationships, you wanna be fun, you wanna be fulfilled. There's so much more. God's got a greater calling for your life. I will tell you, as I lean more into what God had for me, things started to shift for the greater good for me. Doesn't mean it's always easy, it just means there's more. And so make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up. But if you have any questions, please email us. We'll put the link below here where you can email us. And then we wanna hear from you. If you wanna partner on deals, you have cash, you have deals, whatever it might be, we wanna help you. If you want it, you don't have to. There's so many other people out there, but if you do, reach out so we can help you, all right? So with that, thanks for watching. My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.